Welcome to Excel Magic Trick 1010. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1010, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we want to see how to use the sum product function to multiply unit price for each one of our products times the units for each day. But we want our formula to update when we use filter to hide some of the rows or whether we right click hide using the manual hide row feature. All right, let's first think about multiplying and then adding two columns. So all we want to do is multiply price times quantity and then add to get a total. The sum product is great for this. Array 1, well, each one of the days will use the same unit price. So I'll highlight that 4 by 1 range. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it comma, and we'll multiply by the second array. That's a relative range, 4 by 1. I can control Enter. It multiplied each one of the individual items and then totaled it up. I can come to the end here and put in edit mode. And sure enough, beautiful, it's working. We have a relative range and an absolute range. But what if we right click hid or hide? Right? Control Z. Or we use the filter. And you know, filter, you can just do amazing things with filter for your criteria. In either case, our formula doesn't update. Control Z. So what are we going to do? Well, we're ultimately going to use some product to multiply the two columns with uh, hidden or filtered rows. But we're going to have to look at two functions, subtotal and offset. Let's first consider subtotal. Now, subtotal is a great function because it specifically is programmed to ignore hidden rows, whether with filter or uh, manually hiding. It, the, the subtotal function will not deal with hidden columns. Now, there's 11 functions, 1 to 11. 1 to 11 will not avoid manually hidden rows. So right now, if I used a um, 9 for sum, and they came up here and right click, manually hit it. It would not ignore it. So I'm going to use the 100s. These can deal with filters or manually hidden rows. So I'm going to use 109. That way, but the function argument, whether I use the filter or right click, hide, it will work, comma. And I'm just going to look at this relative uh, range right here. Control Enter. Right now, it's adding them all, but let's right click hide. Sure enough, it totally updated. It is not looking at that hidden row. I'm going to control Z. I could use the filter too. And filter is amazing, all the things. And you can filter as many columns as you want, right? 598 control Z. So the problem with subtotal is what? It's spitting out a single number. So it's taking that range right there and spitting out a single number. So we're going to have to trick the subtotal, because the subtotal is cool if we could get it to spit out the whole column of values, but just not the filtered, I mean, the hidden rows or filtered ones. So no problem. That reference argument right there, we're going to use the offset function in that argument. Now I'm going to just um, type right over that subtotal. We'll come back to it in just a moment. I'm going to use the offset. Offset is great. It can create a range of values. you got to give it the reference, which is the starting point. And then you tell it how many rows to go down or up, and how many columns to go over, left or right, from the starting position. Well, guess what? We don't care about columns, because we're going to stay right here. But we want to give it, tell it how many rows from the starting position it should go down or up. Now, we're only going to go down here, because here's the trick. To, to get away from the range, we're going to create an a four separate numbers here. Now, this is a small column, just for example. So we're going to create four separate ranges that are all one by one, one row by one column. So I want 214, 189, 410, and 375 all in their own one by one range. So guess what? For rows, I'm going to give it an array constant. Array constants, you type a curly bracket. that tells this function that this is going to be an array of values. And I'm going to type 0. You have to use a semicolon, because we're going down a row. Semicolons in array syntax mean row, commas mean columns. So I have 1, 
semicolon two, semicolon three. Now what is it? And then close curly back. Now what does this mean? Right now, this rows, if I give it a zero, it means start here and go zero. So that would give us 214. Then I say start at this C2 and go down one. That'll give me the 189. Then I say go from the starting position down two. That'll give me the 410. And then the three says from the starting position goes down, add three rows. It gives me 375. Now this is a function argument array operation. I'm giving this. Uh, rows argument that's expecting a single value. I'm giving it four values, so offset will spit out four uh, individual values. Now, columns, we are not from the starting position going to the left or right, which means subtracting columns or adding columns. So we can skip over that. And then for height, one, comma, width, one. But, whoops. But guess what? This argument right here, reference, if we highlight this, that means the width and the height and delete it, they're gone. That means the function will assume whatever the dimensions of the reference is. Since it's a one by one, boom, everything that offset spits out will be a one by one. So we really don't need to put the height and width even though you could. All right, so now watch this highlight and F9. Four different values. So offset, I'm going to control Z. It isn't programmed to deal with those filtered values. But if you put that into the reference one argument of subtotal, I'm going to use 109, comma, that right there will work. Now, let's just see what happens for subtotal. Highlight and F9. It's given me all the values because I haven't manually hidden or filtered Control Z. I'm just going to hit Enter for the time being. We'll try it both ways. Right click, hide. Now I'm going to come down here and see if this really works. It means the combination of offset in reference one and subtotal. So will this work to create a column of uh, filtered values F9? Sure enough, it does. There's the 0, which is the filtered value. Control Z. I'm going to uh, Enter. Control Z to. Um, control Z to unfilter that. So now I'm back to that, but let's try the filter. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say maybe uh, these two. So I'm trying the filter feature. Now I'm going to come down here and highlight F9, and boom, those two values are filtered out. Now those zeros will come to our advantage because remember, this is going to go into some product. The Second range, remember we had two ranges up in the formula here. Because there's two zeros here, when we multiply this artificially created columns of filtered value times the other range, zero times any number will give us zero. Control Z. All right. Let's copy this over. And just for kick, see if it's working. I'm going to put it in edit mode. This is the relative range, so I better pick up both of these numbers, F9. And sure enough, it does escape. All right. Uh, I'm going to come up here and unfilter, clear the filter. So that is the relative range. We can put this into some product. All right, so array one will be that. I come to the end and type a comma. And again, since there's zeros there, we for the array two, we can just highlight the unit price, all of them F4. All right, so let's brr, drum roll two ranges. We're filtering or manually hiding. Control Enter. Well, nothing's hidden or filtered. Let's go ahead and try it. I'm going to right click. Hide, and sure enough, it works. That formula will work for filtered or manually hidden rows in columns when you want to use uh, multiply these filtered columns inside of some product. Obviously, that's much better than building a formula like that. Now I'm going to Control Z. I think we can I improve this just a bit. I'm actually going to copy this and leave it down here as a trail. So if you download this, you can see that array constant bit there. But you know that array constant could be a real hassle to type out if you had a lot of rows in your columns, right? So we want to see a way to create this using a formula element. So I'm going to come down here and say equals row. I'm going to highlight the entire column, however big it is. That'll spit out all of the row numbers, F9, 2, 3, 4, 5. We want 0, 1, 2, 3, Control Z. So, and by the way, this is a function argument array operation, right? Because that 
argument that is expecting a single value, we give it a bunch, so row spits out a bunch of answers. We're going to do a second array operation. I'm going to say, hey, that full column minus the very first cell in that column, that will give me 2 minus 2, right? And boom. So that you can use that for whatever size column you have, Control-Z. I'm going to copy and Enter. Now I can come up here. And very carefully, see if I can click on the screen tip on rows. I've highlighted it. Now I'm going to Control V. I could highlight it again and hit F9 just to check it out. Sure enough, it is creating the correct values we need. Control Z. All right, ready? Control Enter. And copy it over. Let's try it. Right click Hide. So we're trying Hide. And sure enough, it is working. Control Z. And then I'm going to use Filter. Boop, boop. And you know, again, you could filter on lots of columns here. Um, and it is working. All right, Control Z. And uh, that is a pretty amazing formula. Let's look at it on a uh, different data set. All right, so I've inserted a sheet called Data Set that'll be in the workbook when you download it. We have a uh, similar formula here with the subtotal offset creating uh, that one range here for price that will acknowledge any filter we make. And then the units are this range right here, Array 1. So let's come over here and we'll try. Hey, we just want to see Sue sale. We want only product 1. So we're filtering. And then I love the date filters. Let's do something like uh, last month. Wow, that's cool. right? So there we have filtered a bunch of things. And no way. Our a formula to multiply two columns that acknowledges any, any uh, filtered values if for some product is working. Now, this was a lot of, this had some array formula stuff in it. This is an array formula, right? If you like array formulas, I just completed a book, Control Shift Enter. Now it's July 7th, I'm shooting this video. This book won't be out till about July 20th sometime, but there's a DVD that's available right now, July 7th, available at Amazon and MrExcel.com. Hey, the book and the DVD are quite different products. They're supposed to work uh, in concert together to help you learn about array formulas. The book is better at systematically listing all the aspects of array formulas. And it has a nice list of, of rules for you to, to follow when you're creating array formulas. And the DVD, although there's some similar examples, uh, has more examples and less detail than the book. All right, hey, we'll see you next video.